Hey, what's going on tech enthusiasts? Bo HD here. I hope you guys are doing well. Sorry about the hair. I figured I'd make up for it by putting on this watch and by putting on this little too fancy of a jacket, uh, which uh, I usually don't wear. But uh, hey, you're watching Last Week in Tech, the show where we talk about all the top tech news stories from last week, this week. As always, you can send your tech news story suggestions to me on Twitter using the Last Week in Tech hashtag. Links will be down below to follow me on Twitter. You should go do that and then go submit us a new story suggestion. It's that simple. Your story suggestion could be featured on an upcoming video. That's pretty cool, right? So this past week was filled with more leaks of upcoming devices like the LG Nexus 5X, the Huawei Nexus 6P, and the BlackBerry Venice, and even the LG V10, which had a press release leaked, um, which features the dual displays, which is kind of interesting. We've already discussed a lot of these devices, so you should be pretty filled in. The LG Nexus will officially be called the LG Nexus 5X, while the Huawei Nexus will officially be called the Huawei Nexus 6P. And both of these devices actually had their official packaging leaked out. And I gotta say, the packaging looks fantastic. I think it looks really simple, but really sharp. I did receive a couple devices which officially launched this week. I received the Huawei watch, which looks super sharp and simple. I'm wearing it right now. Um, and then I also just recently received the 2015 Moto 360. So these are the most recent Android Wear smartwatches to hit the market. Um, I'm really excited to test these out in detail and report back to you as to how well they perform. And by the time you're watching this video, the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus will have officially launched on Friday, the 25th of September. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, I apologize in advance for all of the coverage of these devices. I'm sure they'll be way over covered like they always are, but um, it's been a pretty good week for new tech. If you guys have any questions, concerns about any of the devices I have um, or will be receiving, definitely let me know by leaving me a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. I did also start fall term, so it's been a really busy week. Um, and you know, every time you receive new tech, you gotta cover the tech that you received. So I assume next week is gonna be equally as busy. But speaking of Apple and speaking of Android, you might've heard Apple actually released their very first app on the Google Play Store about a week ago now. It's called Move to iOS and it's aimed to help you transfer all of your data from your Android device to your, presumably your new iOS device. The reason I'm talking about it is because it's being bombarded by one-star reviews by I'm assuming diehard Android fans. Uh, there's nearly 40,000 reviews and the overall rating is about two stars because of all the one star reviews. Some of the reviews are actually pretty funny. I'm sorry if I completely butcher your name, which I know I will, but Oftob says it's not revolutionary. Saif Felden says simply, Apple, you suck, go home. And then Miguel writes, it's extremely rude of Apple to make an app whose sole purpose is to persuade users to move to its mobile operating system. If Google made a move to Android app for the iOS app store, it would never make it out of the review process. Miguel, yes, I do think you have a point. Granted, Apple has been a little bit more lenient with its apps, so you never know. Yes, it is a bit rude, but I like to think of it as a reminder of just how open the Google Play Store is. I think that's an awesome thing. And what I don't like to really see is all of the negative reviews or just the fanboys in general. I'm not really much of a fanboy of either platform. I try and use a little bit of both and kind of uh, look at each OS with an open mind, but why can't we all just get along? Switching gears completely, now check this out. Japanese researchers have successfully grown a pair of kidneys in a lab, which were transplanted into an animal and were verified as functioning correctly. This is huge news because one day we will actually be able to grow human organs and transplant them into humans, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen sooner than later. The newly grown kidneys were created from stem cells, and they were grown complete with a drainage tube and a bladder for the collection of urine. So they are fully functioning kidneys. So with humans, kidney transplantation is nothing really new. It's been in place for decades, but it requires a donor kidney, which needs to be used in a short period of time. Lab-grown kidneys would, in theory, overcome the common shortfall in which potential recipients often exceed available donor kidneys. Now, human trials are still a number of years away, I would say probably around three years away, since there are a lot more safety checks that need to take place and need to happen, but we're still one step closer to actually being able to grow organs and transplant them 
into animals or humans, which is pretty incredible. It reminds me of when I was a kid, I used to watch this show on the Discovery Channel, I believe. I don't remember what it was called, but it was about the future and what the future would hold, what it would bring um, in 10, 20, 30 years. And I remember one segment in particular that actually went over being able to, uh, that we'd, we'd be able to grow organs in a lab and be able to transplant them into animals or humans. Um, and so it's pretty neat to see that that is actually becoming a reality. And if I remember right, there was even a section about 3D printing organs, which is also becoming a reality. These kind of futurology stories really make me reflect on the past and what has changed in just the blimp of time that I've been alive. Just the other day, the White House actually reported that broadband internet was to be treated as a core utility, just like electricity and water, that every American should be able to purchase wired broadband internet with download speeds of at least 25 megabytes per second. You think back to the year 2000 or 2005, which is 10 years ago, and the idea that the internet was to be treated like a utility to the likes of water and electricity, and well, that's that idea just seems a little bit hard to believe. But a lot has changed since then. It's the year 2015, and the fact that you're watching this video on the internet is proof that the internet is here to stay and it's just only becoming more and more important and intertwined in our lives. So with that said, that is where I'm gonna to end today's show. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. It really does help show your support. Uh, maybe click that subscribe button if you're brand new and you wanna be updated with the latest tech news and review videos. Definitely click that subscribe button and uh, maybe submit your tech news story suggestions to Twitter using the LWIT hashtag. I might feature your story in the next week's episode. As always, I'm BahooHD. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.